That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, let's go through. Let's talk about every single wide receiver matchup. I will be talking about the tight ends in every matchup as well, just because I know with a lot of tight ends changing in the landscape, guys like Pat Frymuth, Tyler Conklin, we are going to have a lot of questions. But before we get into anything, please make sure you go down there, drop that like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, even though, I mean, we have grown so much with our subscriber count this season that I imagine at this point, everybody watching these videos is subscribed. So thank you so much for that. And I'm going to continue to get back. Let's give away some more free fantasy flock network hats for the people leaving those likes and leaving those comments on this video. The winners for the last video was fruit. Jackin M as well as Anonymous. Thank you all so much. And of course, when you win that Fantasy Flock Network at, send me an email ASAP with your physical address so I can get that sent out to you. And also, you're going to notice as we go through this video, there are going to be player props that are posted up on the screen. Now, maybe one day in the near distance, distant future. Maybe if it's going to be like 2030, 2040, you can just go ahead and click on those player props on the screen and directly bet them there. But until then, when we're living in 2021, you're going to have to go down to the description of the video. You're going to have to go down to the comment section, go through the link to go over to underdog fantasy and on underdog fantasy, you can find all those player props. And at the same time, when you sign up and you use promo code flock, they'll match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. So please take advantage of that. It's available in damn near every single state, but that should be it. Let's go through. Let's dive into these wide receivers and let's start it off with the matchup for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Minnesota Vikings Thursday night game. So we're not going to talk about this that much because a lot of people will have already seen this game play out by the time they're watching this video. Deontay Johnson averaging over 10 targets a game, averaging close to 11 targets a game. You are playing him every single week, regardless of the matchup. He is a wide receiver one. Now, with Chase Claypool, looks like he is probably going to be playing at the time of this recording. Now, I'm not necessarily going to be going through and getting excited about Claypool because I don't think this is an offense that we can find multiple pieces from. And you know, Najee Harris is going to be getting a ton of touches out of the backfield. So I would be avoiding Chase Claypool. And with Pat Frymuth, Frymuth, I mean, just with the consistent role that he has had, especially in the red zone as well, I think that you could start Pat Frymuth as a low-end tight end one. Now, like we said last week, I'm going to continue to give that warning this week. I think you are going to see the touchdown rate fall a little bit for a player like Pat Frymuth. Like we've had some questions, people going, Mason, do we start Pat Frymuth or Kyle Pitts? And I'm going, you have to start Kyle Pitts. I mean, Pat Frymuth isn't in that tier. I mean, Pat Frymuth is averaging over a touchdown every 10 targets so far this season, which is about a reasonable rate. But over the past few weeks, four targets, four targets, definitely trending in the wrong direction. Now, in the case of the Minnesota Vikings with Tyler Conklin, I think Conklin's right there. Because with Tyler Conklin, now that you have no Adam Thielen in this game, I mean, there are going to be more touches available in the red zone. Specifically for Tyler Conklin, I don't necessarily think KJ Osborne is going to be filling in for Adam Thielen one for one. So no, a lot of people want to play Osborne. I think he does have upside in this matchup. I would look for a better option, however, just because with KJ Osborne, this is going to be a volatile wide receiver, knowing that Justin Jefferson is going to account for 30% of this team's targets. At the same time, this will be a run first offense primarily. I think Tyler Conklin does have some sneaky touchdown upside. Now let's go over to our next matchup, the New Orleans Saints and the New York Jets. You cannot start a single player from the Saints outside of Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara. Do not look at any wide receivers. Do not look at any tight ends. And now in the case of the New York Jets, Elijah Moore is going to be an intriguing player we can discuss. Now at the time of this recording, Elijah Moore is not looking like he's trending in a positive direction for this week. He actually ended up missing practice on Wednesday with the quad injury. Now, please just continue to monitor this as we go into Sunday. Y'all know we'll be live streaming every single night through the rest of this week where I can give you those updates with the Elijah Moore quad injury. I think that based on the Corey Davis injury and the fact that Corey Davis is not going to be playing rest of season, Elijah Moore now is that low end wide receiver too that you could start on a week to week basis. Not a great matchup against the New Orleans Saints. Also, you're a little bit pessimistic because they got Zach Wilson in there at quarterback. I mean, outside of that, you're not starting Jamison Crowder. Keelan Cole also looks like he may be on the COVID list. So that also may give you a bump up for Elijah Moore. Really the only player I'm interested in. And now going over to the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers, it looks like Cam Newton is going to be starting a quarterback for the Carolina Panthers here. And as we've said, ever since Cam Newton took over, Cam Newton can be a very effective fantasy quarterback on his own right, given the rushing upside that he has. But Cam Newton is not good news for the running back in this backfield, for DJ Moore at the same time. As we've discussed, 
time and time again. I know that one very solid week from Cam Newton, everybody wanted to come out and scream that we were stupid. If Cam Newton was going to be an above average or even just an average NFL passer, wouldn't we have seen the Washington football team sign him when Ryan Fitzpatrick goes down for the season? Wouldn't we have seen the Seattle Seahawks sign him when they have to start Geno Smith for a month? Wouldn't we see the Miami Dolphins sign him when they have to start Jacoby Brissett for a month? Like, it's not like Cam Newton is the quarterback that he used to be. I think you lower your expectations with DJ Moore. We still have him as a top 24 wide receiver, but he's nowhere close to the wide receiver one that he was at the beginning of the season. And now going over to the Atlanta Falcons, please, I, I know it's a tough matchup. You have to keep playing Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is the exact opposite of a tight end like someone like Dawson Knox. Where Dawson Knox, you know that we're coming through and we're saying, you know what? He is pretty much the Robert Tunyon from 2020. There's no way in hell that his touchdown rate just continues this high. I mean, with Dawson Knox, he's so far this season has had 47 targets and seven touchdowns. So he is averaging a touchdown about every six and a half targets, which is almost identical to what you had with Robert Tunyon last year. And in the case of Kyle Pitts, it's the opposite case. He is getting the volume in Atlanta, yet he's been a little bit unlucky with the touchdown rate so far this season. I would say he's been very unlucky with the touchdown rate. And you know what we chase in fantasy, volume, 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 specifically with talented players like Kyle Pitts, knowing that touchdowns are extremely volatile on a week-to-week -week basis, that a player like Kyle Pitts, this is how we identified Keenan Allen as a buy-low candidate at the beginning part of the season. When you have Kyle Pitts with 82 targets, and one touchdown so far this season as an elite level athlete that's 6'6 and has the same wingspan as Calvin Johnson, there's no reason to believe, especially he averaged like, I mean, want to say a touchdown and a half his last year at Florida in college at 19 years old. There's no reason to believe that Kyle Pitts is going to be a below average tight end in terms of scoring touchdowns. I think you go through, you still play Kyle Pitts as that top level tight end. And with Russell Gage, I would prefer to wait one more week to start him because this is going to be a tough matchup against the Carolina Panthers. And now our next matchup, you got the Houston Texans and the Seattle Seahawks. We do not know who's going to be at quarterback right now for the Houston Texans. With how Tyrod Taylor has played over the past three weeks, I don't really think it matters too much if it's Tyrod Taylor or if it's Davis Mills. I think with Brandon Cooks, you have to lower your expectations. He's a high-end wide receiver three now, someone you can consider for the flex spot. Nobody else in this matchup you can. Now, in the case of the Seattle Seahawks, you should be able to see them effectively move the ball down the field against Houston. I mean, Houston is bad at every single level. I personally would go through and play DK Metcalf. I personally would go through and play Tyler Lockett. I'm ranking Tyler Lockett higher this week. And of course, we can make the argument that in this matchup, maybe the Seattle Seahawks are able to just lean on the run, not necessarily have to throw the ball. With their... It's not like Seattle is the same caliber team that they were the year before or the year before that. I mean, with Seattle, they're pretty bad this season. So I don't want to necessarily say this is going to be a close game between them and the Houston Texans. But right now, the spread is at seven and a half points. That is wildly different than some of the other spreads that we saw previously this season where the Buffalo Bills were going up against the Houston Texans and the spread on that game is 17. Like this can actually be a decently close game between the Seattle Seahawks and the Houston Texans. And now our next matchup will be the Kansas City Chiefs and the Las Vegas Raiders. This is also supposed to be a pretty close game. Of course, we know that these in-division games are pretty tough. Actually, I lied to you. The spread on this game is nine points. My God. I expected this to be much closer in terms of where Vegas was projecting it. I mean, they have this as a further blowout than what they have the Tennessee Titans and the Jacksonville Jaguars at this week. My God, I, I guess with Las Vegas, of course, you have to be lowering your expectations with no Henry Ruggs, also possibly no Darren Waller this week. Now, if you don't have Darren Waller, you can expect that we're going to get top 15 wide receiver production from Hunter Renfro. I mean, we said this this previous week, but with no Darren Waller in this offense, that's going to open up a, an additional nine targets a game where Hunter Renfro actually was able to come out and have his career high in targets this past week. And he looked great while doing so. So you're playing Hunter Renfro almost regardless. In the case of the Kansas City Chiefs, yes, I mean, you have the disappointing week this past week for someone like Travis Kelsey, like Tyree Kill, this entire offense had a hard time moving the ball down the field against a tougher Denver Broncos defense. But I mean, you're looking at the volume. Travis Kelsey still did get eight targets in this game. Tyree Kill is going to be a little bit more volatile week to week. But I mean, with Tyree Kill, he has a ceiling that not many other wide receivers can match. He had 47 points previously this season. I think you play both Kansas City Chiefs studs. You can't play anybody else in Kansas City, though. Now, our next matchup, you got the Baltimore Ravens and the Cleveland Browns. Okay, with Cleveland. 
It's simple. We have learned this time and time again, and we're just going to keep this stance. I don't care what Jarvis Landry's done over the past two weeks. I don't care that last time against the Ravens, he put up a pretty impressive game. You do not start a single player from the Cleveland Browns outside of whoever the starting running back is. You can start the running backs in Cleveland. Outside of that, I don't want to start a tight end. I don't want to start a wide receiver. I don't want to start Baker Mayfield. Now, in the case of the Baltimore Ravens, now, yes, this is a difficult matchup going up against the Cleveland Browns where this game isn't really supposed to be that high scoring. Like, let's go look at the over-under this week that you have with the Baltimore Ravens and the Cleveland Browns. They have that at 42. I mean, compared to a game like Dallas and Washington, I mean, they're supposed to outscore them. I mean, the Atlanta Falcons and Carolina Panthers game is supposed to be higher scoring. The 49ers Bengals game is supposed to be higher scoring. But still, I think that in the case of the Baltimore Ravens, you actually have to go through and play two players in particular. And it's going to be the e obvious answers. That's Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews. Rashad Bateman's no longer playable. Rashad Bateman is now running less routes than Devin Duvernay, than Sammy Watkins. Like Rashad Bateman at this point is borderline droppable. But with Hollywood Brown, I know he's been disappointing. Keep in mind, about four or five weeks ago, when Hollywood Brown was a top six wide receiver in fantasy, we were calling him a sell high candidate based on I mean, Rashad Bateman coming back in based on just us projecting that this Baltimore Ravens passing attack was going to take a step back. We were wrong. Now, yes, we got lucky that Hollywood Brown has, I mean, been a little bit less productive since then, but we were wrong. If you look at Hollywood Brown here, it was a really bad call to say to go through and sell him high. As we've said, yes, the production dipped down, but still the volume is there. That volume is king over the past month. Hollywood has averaged over 10 targets a game still. You have to play him. You have to play Mark Andrews. And our next game will be the Dallas Cowboys and the Washington football team with Terry McLaurin. I, I mean, we, we've been wrong yet again. I mean, we've been saying to buy him low over the past month based on the role that he had in Washington. And, you know, I didn't like him coming into the season. That doesn't matter at this point. We were so far into the year. But we were just looking at the role that he had in Washington saying, you know what? If he is going to be leaned on, if he's going to get 30% of this team's target share, you almost have to just go through and buy Terry McLaurin. Well, I guess you don't because with McLaurin now, this is a wide receiver that since the first month of the season has had more games with less than 10 fantasy points than games with double digit fantasy points. Uh, you have to lower your expectations with Terry McLaurin. He is no longer that high end wide receiver two in fantasy. I think he's actually closer to a mid to low end wide receiver two in fantasy. Now, yes, of course, we have him in our top 24 rankings. Now, yes, of course, you're going to be playing Terry McLaurin. And in the case of Dallas, you play CeeDee Lamb, you play Amari Cooper. This Washington football defense is actually a much better run defense than they are a pass defense. And with Amari Cooper in particular, this is a wide receiver that, yes, struggled this past week. But remember, he almost missed that game. Apparently, he wasn't feeling well with COVID, yada, yada, yada. We don't know. All we know is that he almost missed. So I think that we assume that coming into this week after 10 days of rest, Amari Cooper is back and healthy. I think you have to lower your expectations with Dalton Schultz now that you're going to have Amari, CeeDee Lamb, and Michael Gallup all good to go in this game. So lower your expectations with Dalton Schultz. Gallup is a borderline NRP, borderline flex play. Now our next game, you got the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans. For Jacksonville, this offense is so damn bad. You cannot start a single player here. Do not try to convince yourself that you can. And with Julio Jones... He is going to be coming back from the IR from this hamstring injury. Obviously, this is a nice matchup against Jacksonville. And at the same time, they have no A.J. Brown. So I actually think that Julio Jones is a wide receiver that you can go through and play. Now, we did not rank Julio Jones in our wide receiver rankings this week. Full transparency. At the time we recorded that video, I was not assuming Julio Jones was going to come back in. I did not feel comfortable enough to put him in our top 30 wide receivers. But still, I, I think at this point, you can play Julio. And now our next game, we'll have the New York Giants and the Los Angeles Chargers. And honestly, it looks like we may have Jake Fromm for the Giants. And this is not a good matchup against the Chargers, who have a much better pass defense than they have run defense. So I don't care who's healthy for New York. I don't care if, I mean, Kadarius Tony is able to play. You can't play him if the quarterback's going to be Jake Fromm. And in the case of the Los Angeles Chargers, looks like Keenan Allen is on the COVID list. So fire up Mike Williams. He's right back to where you had him at the beginning of this season as that low end wide receiver one. I think you have to play Mike Williams in every single matchup. And now we're, okay, let me also talk about some secondary options. I've heard some people ask if we can play Jalen Guyton. No, you can't play Jalen Guyton. I know that in theory you go, okay, well, no Keenan Allen. There are more targets available. Keenan Allen and Jalen Guyton essentially play two completely different positions. Keenan Allen runs the routes underneath. Jalen Guyton is purely just a field stretching wide receiver. Please don't suck yourself into either Jalen Guyton or Josh Palmer. 
Now our next matchup, we got the Detroit Lions and the Denver Broncos. Not a good matchup for the Detroit Lions. I would be going through and benching Amaro St. Brown, even though I think you should have picked him up from the waiver wire this week. And in the case of the Denver Broncos, with how this offense looked against the Kansas City Chiefs, with how this offense has looked as of late, we are treating it now like the Cleveland Browns. The only position you could start in Denver is going to be the running back position. And y'all know that we were of the opinion you needed to go through, you needed to sell Cortland Sutton everywhere you could before you got Jerry Judy back in this offense. Well, you know what's really funny at this point is if you're looking at Cortland Sutton since Jerry Judy has come back in, I mean, it is ugly to go through. Look at this. Six points, two points, four points, three points, three points. To look at this timetable of weeks 8 through 13. You are not going to believe me. You are not going to believe me, but let's look at the games that Jerry Judy has played this season alongside Cortland Sutton, and let's get a range of where Cortland Sutton stacks up in those games. Cortland Sutton in those games is the wide receiver 110 on a points per game basis. This is the list of wide receivers that have been more productive than Cortland Sutton over that time period on a points per game basis. Cody Hollister, Braxton Berrios, Tyler Johnson, Nico Collins, Malik Turner, Tajay Sharp, Josh Palmer, Ashton Doolin, Quez Watkins, Alan Lazard, Adam Humphreys, Byron Pringle, Ray Ray McLeod, Keelan Cole, Laquan Treadwell. Jakeem, like you can't play Cortland Sutton. You can drop Cortland Sutton at this point. And then with Jerry Judy, he is definitely the wide receiver one here. I don't even want to start him. I know it's a decent matchup against the Detroit Lions. We have him ranked as a wide receiver three this week. So maybe if you're desperate with a buy as well as an injury, if you say have Jonathan Taylor on buy, so you're having to go through and play, I mean, just you have no options at the flex spot at running back. And then at the same time, you just had the injury to Adam Thielen. And then you're desperate. Sure, you can play Jerry Judy. You're definitely not playing Sutton though. And now our next team, we got the 49ers and the Bengals. I'm a little bit worried because it looks like Debo Samuel may try to play this week, but this game is being played at 4 p.m. So I don't know if it's going to be a Daryl Henderson type situation of last week where we're all sitting there Sunday morning having no idea if Debo is going to be good to go at four and we're having to try to make plans just with that uncertainty. Now, what I would say is if Debo Samuel plays, you play Debo Samuel. He's been a top five wide receiver this season on a points per game basis. Now, my issue with Debo Samuel is he's not coming back from a concussion. We've talked about this at length. But with those players coming back from a concussion, from the COVID list, I'm not saying that a concussion isn't a serious injury with their long-term side effects. I would argue that maybe that's the most significant injury you can have. But in terms of projecting that player to come back for fantasy football purposes that next week, you'd probably rather them have a concussion than a soft tissue injury, especially like a groin injury that you have from Debo Samuel. I think Debo Samuel coming in may not play his usual role. I think Debo Samuel coming in may not play as many snaps as usual. So we would be playing him. But I think you expect wide receiver two production, high-end wide receiver two production rather than his usual top five marks. And then with Brandon Ayuk, lower your expectations with Ayuk if Debo Samuel comes back in, although you can consider him for the flex. And then with the Cincinnati Bengals, you play Jamar Chase, you play T. Higgins, you sit Tyler Boyd, nothing to discuss. I mean, with Jamar Chase, y'all know, we don't have to talk about this anymore. We, we don't have to talk about this anymore. I feel like we've been talking about T. Higgins all season now. And now our next matchup will be the Buffalo Bills and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With Tampa, we, you just go through, you play them all. You play Godwin, you play Evans, you play Gronk. Yes, it's a tough matchup, but as we said a week ago, I mean, all these players can be productive at the same time. This offense is concentrated enough in Tampa and is productive enough. Even in a tough matchup, you're not going to have to worry about the weather here. This is going to be played in Tampa. You can easily go through and play all those options. And in the case of the Buffalo Bills, you can only play Stephon Diggs. It, it's a decent spot where you can assume that maybe they get into a shootout. The issue is if you're playing in a best ball format, yeah, you really like having the combination of someone like Cole Beasley and Emmanuel Sanders because, you know, I mean, pretty much one of them is always going to be productive on a week to week basis. Now, the issue with those players is picking when exactly they're going to have that pop off week. This game does have a ton of shootout potential here between the Buffalo Bills and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But I think for now, we would just look to go through and possibly avoid this. Now, our next game will be the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers. With Chicago, yes, you can play Darnell Mooney if we don't have Allen Robinson. Now, it's not a good matchup now that the Green Bay Packers have a much healthier defense. This defense has been fantastic over the past month or so. Now, in the case of Green Bay, 
Nothing to talk about. You play Devontae Adams. I know a lot of people want to play Marquez valdez Scantling. You can't play Marquez valdez Scantling just because, I mean, he's operating as the field-stretching role in Green Bay. I mean, the same exact player he's been over the past three years. Yes, in a best ball format, he's going to occasionally have a spike week that gets entered into your starting lineup. But the issue is figuring out exactly when that's going to come. I would not be making that bet against the Chicago Bears this week. In our last game, the Arizona Cardinals and the Los Angeles Rams, my bet to be the highest scoring game of the week. I mean, with the case of the Los Angeles Rams, you play both Cooper Cup and Van Jefferson. I'm still going to be benching Odell Beckham Jr. Like we said a week ago, I really think that Odell is going to be the wide receiver three in this offense behind Van Jefferson. You saw that with how the snaps played out this past week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And this is a toughish defense against the Arizona Cardinals. And now in the case of the Cardinals, Please, I know DeAndre Hopkins is going up against Jalen Ramsey. I know DeAndre Hopkins failed you a week ago when we said to play DeAndre Hopkins last week. But it's not because DeAndre Hopkins was still dealing with that hamstring injury. It was because this game just got out of hand between the Arizona Cardinals and the Chicago Bears, whereas Arizona just stopped throwing the ball. Kyler Murray clearly was fully healthy. DeAndre Hopkins clearly was fully healthy. They just didn't have to throw. So I know it's a tough matchup against Jalen Ramsey, but it should be a high-scoring game in general. Play Hopkins. In the case of Christian Kirk, A.J. Green, Zach Ertz, I'm only going to be playing Zach Ertz out of that list because we know with Zach Ertz, it's going to be a much lower bar to get that tight end production into your starting lineup with how bad that position currently is. So play Zach Ertz. I would be looking to bench both A.J. Green and Christian Kirk. Very similar situation to what you have in Buffalo with, I mean, the combination of Emmanuel Sanders and Cole Beasley. And that, yes, you know, probably one of these wide receivers are going to be productive, but good luck picking which one. And of course, thank you all so much for being a part of the flock and supporting the channel. If you have not done so already, go down there, drop that like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I mean, every time you do that, you get entered in to win a free fantasy flock network at. And also make sure you go sign up for Underdog Fantasy. Check out some of those player props you saw on the screen in this video. You can find the link in the description. You can find that in the comment section as well. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a great day and I hope I see you all in the live stream tonight.